Hi guys, it's Eileen Hull and I want to invite you to the paper flower party. Welcome. Is anyone there? Oh, come on. All right, well, I'm going to just get started because I have to meet my husband for dinner. So um, I want to welcome you and tonight we're going to learn how to make flowers using crepe paper. And also last night after the um, broadcast, Barbara wrote and asked if I would show how to make the stems, how to use the twist and style tool. So I'm just gonna do a quick demo of that too. So hi Sally, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, so this is what we're making tonight. Isn't it pretty? It's so soft. Hi Angela. All right, I have a different setup tonight. Last night we had some <laughs> technical problems because we were outside, kept going out of range. I sat on a tile and I broke it. And anyway, we're gonna be better tonight. So here's the flower that we're gonna make and we've used some really pretty German crepe paper, which I got at CHA. I was so lucky I was leaving the show. Hey Angela. Hi Amanda. Oh, aren't, I know, aren't they beautiful? Um, I was leaving the show and this crepe paper booth was packing up and they're like, if it, they had signs, free. So of course I went over, hey Christine, good to see you. So um, Christina, sorry, and um, I scooped up a bunch of it. So this is what it looks like and it comes, actually crepe paper comes in a, a bunch of different varieties. Um, this is the German stuff. The main difference is, let me grab a handful of it, because these are the colors that I use to make the flowers, flower that we're going to do. Okay, it's like a kind of a pinky and an orange, I guess, and a yellow. Really pretty. They go together real nice. Hi, Sylvia. So, um, if you, if you can see it closely, I hope it focuses, the difference in the regular crepe paper that you can get like in a craft store is this stuff is a lot thinner. The wrinkles are a lot tighter. So um, it makes it really pretty. It's just different, you know, it's not better or worse, but I do like it. It's more expensive. But, and here's some other cool stuff like a tie dye. Hey, Trisha, how are you? So that's kind of cool. They have crepe paper that comes in silver. That's kind of cool. I haven't been too lucky with that. This is a really pretty blue. This is the German stuff. Hey, Christine. And then this is some vintage stuff that I got. This color is kind of ugly, even though it's kind of a turquoise, but it's like kind of gray. But this was, I don't know how old, but it's Denison and it's, it's old, but it was like a dollar. I got it somewhere and I thought, uh, ah, all right. And this is the stuff that you will get in like an AC Moore or Michaels and it's a little thicker. Hi, Christine. So, um, it, it all works and I'm going to use the, uh, nicer stuff tonight just cause I have it. And I just really like those colors that went together. Uh, before we get going, I just want to say hi to everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name's Eileen Hull. I'm a designer with Sizzix, and we're celebrating the release of my new collection. Hey, Delena! And it's called uh, Paper Flower Party. So we're going to have some. In fact, we're going to have it all week, and then I'm kind of thinking there are a lot that I haven't done, so we might go into next week. Who knows? All right, so... Um, let me just show you the collection before we start. And this is the Heart and Soul Flower. We're gonna use this tomorrow night and we're gonna do that with crepe paper. Hey, Delena. And this is the Spring Leaves, which I love because they have different sizes and just different kind of, um, <laughs> yay next week, we'll see. We'll see on Friday how burned out I am from having to keep my kitchen clean, unless I can go back outside, which was fun, but had some technical problems. All right, this is the Romance Flower. This is the one we used last night. Hi, Debbie and Roz, good to see you. Uh, and then the Pansy is the one that we're gonna use tonight. Um, this is the Flower Pocket. This is the XL dye 
hey Diana, oh good to see you. Um, that is the one scoreboard in this collection. And then we have some that are returning, which were, um, I know Angela's favorite was the candy box and that's coming back. So we're all excited about that. And then this is the rolled flower. This is a Thin Lips. Oh, thanks Delena, that's nice. All right, well, I don't have the pansy one in the wrapper because I'm still waiting on that one. But here's what it looks like. I don't know if, yeah, you can see. There are three different petals and we're gonna cut uh, a bunch of them. Well, we're gonna cut three of each. So I just wanna show you, there is a little trick to working with crepe paper. And what I've done, I showed you the colors that I had. I just cut a strip that's about uh, six inches wide, more or less. Yeah, you can't do <laughs> Yeah, she loves that one. You should see what she makes out of that. Wow. Um, so I have three pieces of crepe paper that are you know, maybe 20 inches long or so. Um, oh, sorry, flash player unavailable. I don't know. Hey, Judy. Judy got a new camper and she's camping. The scamp. All right, so I'm just gonna cut these and I'll tell you why. Um, because there is a grain to crepe paper. They only wrinkle in one direction or you can stretch them in one direction. So what I did was I cut out sections of three. So now I have three pieces of each color. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stack them. I'm going to have one going this direction. See the grains going horizontally. And then I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to put the grain going up and down. And so when we go to make our flower, that's going to give us kind of uh, equal, um, stretchiness in either direction. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to do, you know, this way, that way, this way. Now I'm going to take my pink, do the same thing. And I'm going to cut these all at one time. It's really thin. I could probably cut, I don't know, 30 layers of this stuff. This is, and now I'm going to do the yellow, same thing. So I'm not going to bore you here, but Trust me, they're all stacked up and you just want to make sure you cut them big enough to cover the surface of the die. So we ought to be good here. And if you chop something off, don't worry about it. Mayor, how are you? I was at Mayor's store last weekend when we went to the uh, Indy 500, had a great time. So just to catch you guys up here, we're making some crepe paper flowers. Aren't they pretty? I love these colors. We're using German crepe paper which is uh, finer than normal, regular crepe paper, but same idea. It's just stretchy, it's cool. So when we, all right, you'll see, we're, we're gonna cut it. Now I've laid my stack of uh, crepe paper on my die, and I'm gonna make my Sizzix sandwich. I'm gonna put my cutting pad on the bottom, put one on top, making sure not to squish that. And then I'm just going to run that through. And I just want to show you, I have the new Caddy. Have you guys seen this? Whoa, this is so cool because I can keep all my tools. You know, last night how I uh, couldn't find my scissors. If I had had this hooked up, I would have been good to go. But oh well. All right, so I'm going to run this through. And then I'm just going to kind of slide this off because sometimes these can get a little staticky and they'll kind of fly all over the place. And then I'm just going to, let's see if you can see, I'm just going to kind of poke the centers so I can release them in a nice stack here. All right. So then I'm just going to take each one and here's the real trick to the, where'd it go? <laughs> Working with the crepe paper. And I'm going to put that as close as I can. And hi, Peggy. And so you're, you can see here how the grain goes. Okay, this is going across. This is going across. But when I go to kind of manipulate this, it stretches. But it only goes this one way. So here, you know, I'd like it to go like that, but it's only going to go like this. But it all evens out. It's going to look great. All right, so you can see, now if we had a little more of a center in here, I would probably 
poof that out a little too, but here it's kind of small, so I'm not gonna bother with it. But see how that's gonna make a nice little curled up petal? All right, and I'm gonna go through and just do a bunch of them. You can't really do them together because you cut them all separately and going in different directions, so they take a little while, but um, what's, what's that going on with everybody? How's everyone doing? Hey, Kat, how are you? All right, so, sorry, this is gonna take a little while. I also wanna show you, oops, don't do that. I just chopped off one of the, it is fragile and I should say that. So, you know, be gentle when you stretch. Don't, you know, cause it will break. As you can see, I just did it. So, and you're just kind of pulling in the centers you're not going on the outside. Although, if we were doing a different kind of uh, flower, we maybe would want to do that because um, you can ruffle the edges too. Just really kind of gently pull on them and it will see how that ruffles the edges. And we could do that, but I don't want to take the time. But you can get a lot of different effects um, using these and just it's just so soft and very pretty and they stack up so nice. All right, so, all right, sorry. I, sh I was gonna do some ahead of time and then I realized, oh, look at all this junk I have on my countertop. I need to hide that or people will think I have piles of stuff <laughs> at my kitchen. I don't really work in here that much, but you know, things add up, the mail, the bills, all that stuff. But see, this is another thing that you can do while you're watching TV. It's very relaxing. You really don't even need to look at it after a while. You just kind of, now see, here's one that's chopped off. I don't know, I must have not hit the right spot, but. And then I kind of make little piles. I'm gonna put all of my medium size ones in one pile. So when I go to load them on my flower, I know which one goes where. All right. So, um, this is one of my favorite, favorite things to cut and make flowers from. I think I just like how soft they are. Hey Sarah, how are you? Thanks for coming by again. I'm glad I didn't scare people off. I have to say hi to Sue Black and she's not here today, but she wrote me such a nice note last night and said, because we did have some te technical difficulties and went, you know, out of range of my internet because we went outside and she said, don't worry about it. That was fine. You know, you're going to be all right. <laughs> so I just want to thank her for her nice little comforting email because this is all this technology. Now see there, I really messed that one up, but I'm going to still fluff that because it's got the center. If it didn't have a hole, I would throw it away, but we're good. Sorry, it's taken so long. All right, and then I'm going to show you the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a stem using the new twist and style tool. Aloha, Linda. How are you? Linda is my army friend from Hawaii, Hawaii, as she says. All right, so almost done. Linda, we're making flat, uh, these pretty crepe paper flowers and you can make a lay out of this. Diana likes the candy box. That's, that is a fun one. Maybe we'll do a, a Facebook Live on that sometime. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but we have, oh, I should have done that before, huh? <laughs> and I can't see what everyone's saying. But, so we have three piles of petals here. Aren't they pretty just like that? All right, so now I'm going to show you how to use the twist and style tool. All right, and I'll try to stay in range here. I think, yeah, you can see this. So this is the tool. Um, it's actually going to be this color, but I'm still using my old one because I'm just used to it. But um, this is the really cool part of this tool because before 
uh, you could, there were tools that twist things, but not that anchored them so you could do a project on your own. You would have to go, because you're going to see in a minute, it takes two hands to twist the wire. So you had to like clip it somewhere or it, it was just a big pain. So anyway, uh, I'm going to, this has a very strong suction, but you want to put this on something very smooth. So this quartz countertop is great. You just want to make sure that's clear and you press down and then you lock it. Okay. So see, that's really, really sturdy. I'm going to use some wire. I think this is a 22 gauge. Uh, let's see. 24 gauge. All right, this is just craft wire from Michael's. Um, I did also use some of this real thick stuff and it's a little hard to do, but look at how cool that came out. Isn't that neat? Hey, Tanner. Hi, Pam. Oh, I hope your husband's doing okay. I've been saying prayers. And if you take a hammer, you can smush this and make really cool trim out of it. You can also twist uh, soft materials. This is chenille yarn, but I'm going to do this on another day, okay? Because this is a whole thing in itself. Um, but we're going to twist our wire that we want to use for the flower today. So this is just about, well, maybe 14 inches times two, so it's 28 inches of wire. And then I have a bead. Yesterday we used a pearl in the center. You can use buttons, whatever you like. And I just am sliding that down into the center. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of give it a little twist so it stays together. Okay, see that? It's just at the end. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to tease you, but it's all fun. All right, so now, whoops, I'm just going to take my hook end of this tool and I'm going to anchor the bottom. I'm just going to twist the wire around down at the base here around itself and then I'm going to start twisting. All right. I hope you guys can see. Yeah. I'll show you at the end. And then halfway through I kind of scrunch this up together because sometimes it doesn't reach all the way to the end. You want a nice even twist. And then when it gets tight enough I will just pop this off. Pop that off, trim off the end, you can use wire trimmers, this is thin enough that it will cut with scissors, but now you have your stem, the center of your flower and stem, and it's beautifully evenly twisted, isn't that cool? Hey Kim, how are you? I'm sorry, I'm talking and I can't talk and, and read at the same time and it's killing me. I'm going to go back over this tonight and say, oh, I didn't say hi to whoever. But um, anyway, all right, so here is the stem and inside or, uh, you know, center of your flower. So now we're going to put them together. Okay, so we're just going to start threading them on one at a time. And I'm not going to worry one, you know, what direction they're going or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of alternate the colors and layer them on. And it does kind of look like a lay, actually. But I love how soft these are and they really go together pretty fast. And it, you know, if you needed to make a bunch of these, you could, well, cut more at a time for one thing. And, um, you know, get a nice little process going. All right, so now we have layer one done, just like we did last night. Okay. Oh, you got me on your phone. Oh, cool. Yeah, like when you're making a lay, I bet. Hey, Terry. So we're going to do the same thing that we did last night to give this a little dimension, and that is to add a button in between the layers. Good to see you, Terry. It's been a while. We're making crepe paper flowers from my new Sizzix collection. Isn't that pretty? All right, we're not even, not even a third of the way done. And you don't have to worry. They're all going to kind of distribute evenly. If not, just fluff them around a little bit. Now we're going to add the medium ones. All right. Ah. All right, so now we'll add the medium size petals. And I'm just alternating colors. 
There's really not a quicker way to do this because you have to individually fluff each one. But it goes pretty quick. And see there we're putting the one on that doesn't have the, uh, it's missing a petal, but you're not going to see in the end. But see, aren't they just pretty like this? So fluffy. Oops. Come on. All right, so there's another layer. And you can kind of scrunch it a little bit. Now, if you wanted to make one that size, just stop there and, and finish it off. But let's do the last um, layer. That's the large. I'm going to add another button in between just to give it a little more height and then load on the rest of them. And really, it's similar to what we used last night, the techniques that we used, and tons of different ways you can put flowers together. And really, any dye that you have will work. That If it doesn't have a hole in the center, just take your paper piercer and punch a hole. Now, there's a little one that I missed, but I'm going to put that on. It doesn't matter. All right, so there's our final layer. But see, when we put them together and squish them, it gives all these nice, pretty little, almost like rose, rose petals there. Isn't that cool? Hey, Tammy, how are you? So there we have our crepe paper flower. And now I'm going to take a leaf that I have already cut. And I'm just going to take that and kind of give it a little, like, you know, you do with gift wrap. That sounds horrible. Sorry. I don't usually use this. I don't know where my pliers. Oh, here it is. My screwdriver. <laughs> so you can do all kinds of things with these if you want to kind of fold them in half. And then you have more of a, you know, different look to them. But however you want to do it. And then I'm just going to poke a hole at the base here. Don't poke yourself. And I don't need this little petal or uh, stem, so I'm going to break that off. And then I'm going to load that on my stem. All right, we're almost done. So if you see anything under here, you can kind of untuck that. And then we're going to take one more button and add that on the bottom. And the same tip that we did last night, you're going to take a little glue and you can add some under and some on the leaf if you want. And then you're just going to take the button, press down, and we're going to take our little bucket clip. Put them all away. See how clean I was trying to be? <laughs> and then you're just going to press this all the way down so it's kind of popping up and there is your beautiful crepe paper flower. Isn't it cool? I love it. Now I want to make a whole batch of these. Um, so basically that is how you use crepe paper to make a flower. So uh, tomorrow night we're going to do tissue paper and Let's see, I think we're going to do this, and I still have to do my little wraparound thing here, but I'm going to use some of that wire using the twist and style tool to make some wire and maybe ribbon to go around that. But um, here are some other tissue paper flowers that I've made, and I want to show you there's tons of different techniques. Thanks, thanks guys. Um, this here, I wrap the center of a... Um, Oh, you missed it, Trisha. All right, well, we'll do it tomorrow night too because that's how I'm going to make all my stems because they're so quick and easy. All right, I'm going to show you how to wrap them too if you want to wrap them with floral tape, your stems, and your, how to wrap your leaves in. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow night uh, or maybe Friday. I'm not sure. Okay, this one, this these are all made out of tissue paper. I mean, crepe paper, sorry. Uh, this one here, I added glitter. I think I used some spray adhesive and then I just kind of dunked it in a little dish of glitter. Um, this one here, I used three different colors. Uh, what else? Yeah, I, these are all kind of combined. I like to take different flowers and 
take a leaf from or a petal from you know this die put it with another one and so you can get endless combinations even the little tiny ones they're just so cute look at that little pearl in the middle this one i like you can use those uh little frond things i don't know what you don't call them stamens hi suzanne oh thanks angela yeah um well it's called the twist and style tool and this is what it looks like but it's a prettier color they're shipping in july and they're 16.99 i think that's a really good deal and uh, I think you can think of a lot of different ways to use it once you have it. You can use it to make jewelry or keychains or um, this is a necklace that I made out of yarn. Isn't that cool? So that's kind of tricky. I love that tip. I'll show you that another time. Okay. So it's 630. Sorry, I tried to go as fast as I could, but um, Hi, Suzanne. I'm sorry I didn't see you at the Indy 500. I got stuck at the place at the uh, RV with the kids, and, you know, it was a long walk over to the uh, hall. Uh, no, I don't think I am attending that, Angela. I want to. I don't know. I haven't heard anything, so I assume no, but who knows? <laughs> you never know. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys. Remember I was telling you about the flowers I made from the map? Aren't these cool? This is the UK map. And then I also made this cool little um, hanging basket out of the twist and style tool. Candy, how are you? Yeah, I'm sorry, Angela. I wish I was going too. Oh, you just missed it, Candy. Thank you. This is a map. I'm just showing everybody uh, the new flowers in the collection. And we made these flowers tonight. We're using the Pansy dye. It's brand new. Shipping now. Can't wait to get mine. I guess they were back ordered, so I don't have one with the, the label on it. Mine is like a, you know, QC sample. So anyway, uh, this... This is uh, the class we did tonight. So tomorrow night we're going to do tissue paper. And I would love if you would join me again, 6 o'clock. And I'll try and be quicker. <laughs> but I'm showing you a lot of stuff. Well, thanks for coming, Linda. Oh, have fun. Oh, your granddaughter's going to art class. That's good. All right, you too. Take care. Um, so I'll hopefully see you tomorrow night. And we'll do our tissue paper flowers. And then on Friday night... We're going to do mat board, which is my favorite. And you're going to wonder, what the heck are you going to do with flowers and mat board? So come and see. <laughs> so uh, please follow me on Facebook, Eileen Hull Designs. On Instagram, Eileen Hull. And on, what am I leaving out? On my blog, EileenHull.com. All right? Thanks, everyone, for coming. Have a nice dinner, a nice evening, nice afternoon, depending on where you are. So um, I will see you tomorrow, okay? God willing, thank you. Night.